Let me, for a start, let me just introduce myself. My name is uh, Ahmad Saifuddin and you just call me Sae. And I'll be your moderator for today. Thanks, Khalis, for joining our call and willing to give us uh, to share your knowledge and your expertise in the branding. And for everyone's information, he is the co-founder of Visual Lab, and he will explain to you his background, what his company is doing, and all about his company. All right. And before we start with his presentation, let me just take five minutes to explain our NGO, our new NGO, which is Community the Global. Let me share my screen first on this one. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yep. So if I can see your screen now. All right. All right. Cool. This is, uh, the, I'm going to be just brief into introduce for all the participants of our NGO, which is Community Theatre. And then I will start with how we establish our NGO first, which is during the COVID-19 and it has absent billions of lives around the globe. Just a little bit of a background of our NGO. People lost their jobs and loved ones. Economies has fallen into crisis and societies have fallen into this way. And during this change this time, the non-profit sector has been the most active. You can see there's a lot of NGOs out there. They went out and then they helped a lot of people, right? During the COVID-19. And the world has come to understand the rules and importance of NGOs in society was faced with the pandemic's unprecedented challenges. But one thing that the world has often overlooked is how NGO has been affected by the pandemics. Like the COVID-19 is affecting every one of us, NGO including. And from our observation, we can see that one major problem that several NGOs has encountered during this pandemic is a funding crisis, like all this time. But during the COVID-19, I, I think it, it has become worse, especially on the funding crisis. And the lack of funds poses a great danger to the survival and growth of NGOs, particularly in the area of capacity building. All right. And the capacity building has always been put on the back burner by the NGOs, even before the pandemic, like we don't focus much on the capacity building. And with the funding crisis due to the pandemic, it is expected that the situation would even worse. And then because of this, we like uh, Fidaos as a co-founder of the community kind of Digger Global. He and his partner established this NGO, which is Community Take Global as a social business, business to make capacity building more accessible for the NGOs. So we provide like platform for NGOs out there to have access for capacity building. And one of our earliest initiatives is the establishment of the Tech so Connect Malaysia chapter through a partnership with the reputable US-based NGO Tech so Global. So on this partnership, right, we actually have, we actually launched this Committee Clicker Global last year in December. And we explain in detail how our NGO works and what's the like partnerships that we collaborate with. But then if you guys want to know more detail of it, you can just connect with us and or you can go to our LinkedIn page, which is a community ticket global, if you want to know more details of it. And uh, about community ticket global, the social vision is to be the one stop center for the nonprofit organization for NGO to acquire knowledge that can help them improve their words and amplify the social impact to the community they serve. And we actually intend to achieve this vision via two approaches, which is first, we will provide the capacity building platform. And the second is consulting services for the NGO. All right. And then just to let you know, our NGO is always welcome a strategic partnership with any organization with the same value or intention. Like we can have a, a discussion on how this collaboration will work. And then what's the benefit that we can offer to society out there, right? So you can just go to our LinkedIn page and you can, or you can just connect, contact me or the founder of Community Tigger, which is Zofi Daos directly to like, to discuss on this collaboration if you, I think that we can go for partnership.
Okay. So before that, let me see if you guys want to have any question or anything, just see in the chat box and then we will answer your question from there. And the next one, Kalis, just monitor the chat box. If, if any question, just talk to me, Kalis, so that I can also be. All right. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. What we offer, we actually offer two platform under community tiger, which is first is capacity building in here. So under capacity building, we will have a series of monthly webinars like we have right now, focusing on change management, knowledge management, strategy, fundraising, and branding. And on the second platform, which is consulting services, we actually provide consulting services in the areas of strategic planning, process optimization, program or project management, and monitoring and evaluation. So it depends on the needs of your NGO. If your NGO needs consulting in certain area, you can reach out to us and then we will see what we can have from our side. Okay. And okay. We actually have come up with interesting event or team for this year which is 2023 Tech And we come up with five teams for this year. We see the first team is design strategy. And the second is change management. The one is branding. The fourth is fundraising. And the fifth is knowledge management. So we will focus on these five teams for this year alone. And the first team that we chose for 2023, which is today, is the third team which is branding and we know branding is really important for us to for your NGO for NG for your NGO to be more visible in front of our people right so that's why we choose this branding as the first first team to kick off our 2023 okay so for this team which is branding we have our we established speaker which so he will be like present to you or will explain to you how do you brand your NGO and what's benefit and all. Without any further ado, I would like to invite our speaker, which is Ahmad Khalis for this event. All right, Khalis, Hi, Khalis, I'm here. Yep. Thank you, Saif. Hi, everyone. I hope you are well and excited for today's sharing. Before we start, Saif, I need your help because when I'm not going to see the chat, so if there's any question, I need your help to notify me and let me know lah in terms of the questions. My name is Kalis. I am the CEO of Visiolab. So technically, we are a creative agency focused on corporate content creations. So currently, we have three brands under us. One is Visio Asia. So it is focused on visual text where we do long, uh, long, long time live time lapse, all the virtual production and whatnot. And we also have Trendlet Media, which is the creative media for corporate content creation. And we also do have a creative space where we do shootings, events and whatnot. This is our capabilities. We specialize in digital communication and captivating visuals. So we have three pillars under our services. First is creative visuals. So under creative visuals, we do content production, which is video production, 2D and 3D motion graphics, cinematic drones, photography, and CP. Under branding, we do brand development and rebranding, collateral, print and packaging design, editorial and marketing contents. So in terms of what we are going to delve into today is more towards brand development or objective of having a brand identity. So next will be text visual. So under text visual, we do have digital development, website design, UI, UI UX, and also content management system. Under new media, we do have 360 virtual tour and mixed reality and long-term Time lapse. In terms of this eternal labs, one of our kind products that we have developed on our own, it is the first in Malaysia for long term lifetime labs that cater for building construction progress, video, plan, and so on. 
And we do also just introduce our new services under us, which is Academy, developing talents in creative drone, video production, and also brand identity. So this is the, what we do and our services at Visio Lab. This is my team. Currently, we have about 14 to 15 of us and three, four of our partners is basically not come from the communication or media background, but we are architects. We graduate as architects. We work for two or three years, but then we decided to embark in this creative journey and having a multiple disciplinary skill set and also learning quite a few things during our study time in making a video, creativity, and also one of key factor here is analysis and diagnosis help us into this and back the new journey of creative world. So this is technically our served client. So we have been serving global clients, Fortune 500 companies like Petronas, Sapura, Datacom, Aru, and also Kazana. But we also serve the government sector and also SMEs. And most of the project under these clients will be video production, branding design, and also graphic design. Yeah, so I'm going to pass over to I to sh just show my showroom. Can take over now. Okay, give me one second. I'm sharing my screen. You can see my screen, right? Yep. All right, cool. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith to see into the future. Envision the possibilities and embracing the change. To see further, we understand. Break limits to expand qualities. Break barriers to push beyond the goal. We believe vision and value are connected. With great power comes greater possibility. We are seeing the world through the wide trees of innovations across industries, lands, systems, and people. In the new digital world, this is what we do. We craft cultural stories to create movement, to inspire. We capture the vision of tomorrow through organization, people, and the planet. We amplify art with technology. We build excitement. We create extraordinary experiences. We're architects that develop visuals that influences from around the world and experience. We help lines change before the curve. We go above and beyond. We help people harvest the power of visuals to seize the future. Thanks to a team that defies expectations. This year, map, visuals with vision. All right. You say for that name, I'm sharing back my screen now. All right. So moving forward, our methodology, how do we do it? So in Visual Lab, we always approach every project with this five methodology. So the first one would be discovery phase. This is where you discuss your goals, determine your success metrics, identify problems to solve, and define target audience of the output. I think first and foremost, a lot of people out there, when they are creating content, they miss this step. or They always come up with, oh, I have an idea, so I want to do video like this and this. But they never took a step, step back and discuss in terms of what is the success metrics that I'm looking into by producing this video? What is the problem or the issue that my viewers are facing so that I can tackle that and make it as a hook? And what is actually the target audience of the video production? So that is the first step that we always focus on with our clients. And it is the most, I think, the second most crucial part in terms of producing any creative content, be it for posters, video, website, or other contents. 
So secondly would be content strategy. So this is where we design the storyline for the entire output to map out the key customer journey and understand what content need to be produced to communicate your services or your products. So this is where you define the visual direction. This is where you define in terms of whatever that you gather during the discovery phase, it need to be answered in this content strategy. So next would be the production. This is what the normal people would do first, which is shooting video, creating posters, doing presentation decks. So this is normally the first step that people take, but there's actually two steps behind this stage in order to create an impactful communication pack. So next would be post-production. This is where you select, you do composition, and you make sure whatever you have produced in the previous phase, which is the production phase, meet your objective in content strategy and also discovery phase. So this is where you edit, you compose everything into one output. And finally, I think this is one of the most key essential piece also, which is review and refine. So this is where you test your products or services or your content by handing it to to a close group, maybe, so that they can give you feedback and then refine the plan towards your success metrics and whatnot. So this is the five methodology that we applied our project to our clients. So in terms of our module for TechSoup 2023, we aim to share our thoughts with you guys in terms of branding identity, video production, pitch deck, and also graphics. In terms of branding identity, what we are going to discuss today mostly is about decide what your, what's your organization want to accomplish. That's what. Identify your target audience and then define the term of success with your campaign and then decide how do you want to make your organization known. So this is for, uh, I think, four pillars for today that we are going to discuss. For video production, pitch deck and graphics, we will discuss in a future meetups, hopefully. So this is just some example that are currently available in the market currently, but this is more to a business example. In doing branding direction, yeah, you need to somehow determine it can go both ways in terms of doing branding. It can go to the good side or it can go to the bad side. So you have to determine and also do the review and refine a lot of times until you find one branding identity that really upholds your mission, your values, and your organization goals. Yeah. So for this example, you can see the shifting from example, Bank of America in terms of logos, Renal in terms of logos. These are the first uh, brand identity that they change in order to move to the future. So this is again another branding direction example. So whether you want to stick with legacy of your NGO or you want to be more emerging like all the new tech companies and whatnot. So if you see IKEA, Apple, even McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, uh, they are more towards the legacy part of it. But if you see also Lada, Book Messenger, TikTok, so they are more towards the emerging side of it. And if you can also see and differentiate, the treatment to the logo is quite different. So the more emerging side will be more robust and more dynamic by having the gradient of colors. But in terms of legacy, they have a very careful lines between one and another so that it is more structured in the manner. So this is just some example of it. So you have to also remember whether you need to preserve or you need to change your uh, branding identity of what you are having now. So it's, it, you need to decide on that, whether you want to preserve or you are going to change or you are going to enhance. So based on today's, I hope based on today's sharing, you guys can embark into this exercise. So what will we explore today? The first one would be over your objective. So under discover your objective, you need to know what do you want to do 
in your NGO, meaning the branding identity of your NGO. Is it for monetary? Is it for, so for monetary, you have to design in terms of, is there any funnel to get the monetary objective? And under credibility, we have recognition and certificates. And also under, if you want the objective of your NGO is to recruit people or even for partnership, expansion and cross support services. So first thing first, we need to discover your objective. And moving forward, we will discuss on design target audience. So begin communicating. This is where when you have the objective in the first phase, you can now design your target persona. Who would, who would be your, what we call Mr. Adam or Mr. Lim of your NGO? Who would be the person who would donate your money? Who would be the person who, can, who you can recruit becoming your volunteers? And who organization that you can partner in terms of to expand or to cross support your services? So this is where you design your target audience. You design in terms of where to post content messaging and in the end, determine the right video styles. So the third thing that we are going to discuss would be define success metrics. So this is where you bring it to life and this is where you develop a project plan. And finally, you need to design your marketing plan, produce a good campaign collateral and finally impactful message to the community. All right, so under discover your objective, do you guys have any question you can ask in the chat box and Saif can help me to read the question, yeah? All okay. right. Okay. Yeah, sure. But it's so far, no okay. question yet. All right, cool. Under discover your objective, right? Generally, the objective of NGO, a branding identity, is to clearly and effectively communicate the organization values goals and impacts to its target audience. So under these four, I would say four main objectives of an NGO, you need to discuss what is your full objective. So in terms of monetary, determine your monetary objective funnel to ensure that your brand messaging is in the right direction. So if you are looking for donation, so you need to put the objective as donation because the messaging would be different from a sponsorship messaging. And also, if you want to go for grants or product purchases or service purchases. So I'm going to also share one case study afterwards on one NGO that we help in terms of to rediscover their objective. And maybe I will share in terms of what we have done to help them also. So secondly, on credibility part, we need to establish trust, legitimacy with potential donors, supporters, and community. So you need to build trust, recognition, certificate, familiarity, and also social acceptance. So this is quite important in order for you to, to move forward. And in terms of these four main objectives, right? You can technically have four of these objectives in your branding identity, but as a start, maybe you need to prioritize on one and moving forward to the next one. Yeah. And under recruitment, we do have, if you want, if your NGO want to recruit potential employees, beneficial recipients, and also volunteers. And finally, the fourth objective would be partnership. So if you want to partner with government agencies, authorities, businesses, other NGO, and also strategic partner. So this is a four objective that you need to look into and decide where you want to do any, what we call creative content creation processes. So this is just a case study from the Federal Territory Association for the Mental Handicap called SUBH. They are primary mission is to provide education and training to mentally handicapped children so that they will be helped to the fullest extent possible in reaching their maximum potential. Their hope is to provide a comprehensive services to these children and adults with mental handicaps and it is their aim to improve their quality of life for this mentally handicapped person. 
It is born in this year was established in 1964. It was initiated by a group of concerned parents and voluntary <laughs> worker under sponsorship um, of the then Rotary Club of Klang and Portsmouth Ham. So technically, this NGO is founded by concerned parents and also and they focus on mentally handicapped children and adults in giving them better education, uh, better education lah, and training. Yeah, and the target user or their participants would be from 2 years old to 72 years old. So, in terms of from that case study just now, maybe I would like to open up a bit in terms of this discussion. If you guys can tell in the chat, what would be the Samhish objective from the fourth objective that I shared with you just now? Can you guys guess in terms of what is their objective in order for them to do in messaging and whatnot? Okay, can you share the, with us the page and the slide of four objectives? Oh. Please? Yeah. All right, Ken. Yep. So let's just pause for one minute and maybe you guys can share in the chat also in terms of what is their maybe objective that they want to do. Anyone share their thoughts in the chat box? Yeah. Anything? So Saif, what do you think? What would be their main objective in their content messaging future or moving forward? You would say because the objective is to help the, the mentor of Twitter. It's probably credibility, I would say. Yeah, yeah. The first objective that they, they are focusing now is towards the credibility part. Lah. Yep. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so we actually have to know what's the objective first and then we have to portray in the, the brand first that this is our objective so that it's easy for people to know the objective of our engineer. Mm -hmm. Yep, because realistically speaking, when you do a video or even a poster, uh, a graphic poster, if you are doing a poster for credibility and if you are doing a poster for recruitment, it does not have the same treatment or is it the direction of the poster would be different, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so that's why you guys need to discover your objective in order to really attack your target audience impactfully lah. Yep. Okay. So, do you have any comments or can I proceed? Sorry. One comment, Kalis, probably from the song. It's just that because you mentioned that we can change our objective throughout the, like the, or like, what the down, down the, what we can change. The first objective is, uh, first is, we will say credibility. And then five years uh, later, we say, oh, this is no longer our priority. So you would like to go for monetary or equipment, right? So yep. that, that could happen, right? Like what yep. if people see it? Uh, my concern is why if people perceive us as the first, oh, the OGT or NGO is first is priority. But then towards the end, uh, it seems like this is no longer the objective. The objective is more like monetary. And then would that be bad? bad perceptions towards the NGO because it seems like it's not consistent towards their objective. Okay, so in terms of the objective, you can have a different objective for different period of time. So even for our, for this subpage, the objective changed in just about three months. So every three months, they will shift their objective to one. So one is you need to attack according to period of time also. For example, because they are providing training and education for mentally handicapped person from to December of every year, their objective is recruitment. But after that, moving forward, from example, from January to March or to April, their objective is more on money tree because they want money to operate their NGO. And when they talk about maybe June to September, it's all about partnership. Because when you do objective on partnership, you gain maybe a new partner. And from new partner, you develop your module again. And then you offer back to the recruitment objective in October to December. So it is not 
technically you cannot change. You can change according to the needs and also the target or just that you are facing currently. Lah. Yeah. So moving forward in terms of the case study, right? Okay. First question from uh, uh, Atira Hassan in the chat. So she okay. mentioned that is it okay to change the objectives like that? Yeah, it is definitely okay. No problem with that. Because you have to understand whenever you do content messaging, be it video, photo, or even graphic posters, you are targeting a different audience actually. So, example, if you are doing a credibility now, you are maybe targeting to a maybe government agencies. So, these kind of people will see you. But whenever you do recruitment, these people see you, but they are not reactive towards your content messaging. But people that more on that is, I think, impacted by the recruitment poster would be your other types of target audience. So you can have multiple types of them. Right? Yep. And it is definitely okay. And it is not okay to have one objective because in, in, in running an NGO, your objective might change due to the period of time the circumstances that you are facing currently and also maybe even your when your goal change, your objective need to change. So having multiple objective is okay. It's just that you need to prioritize which at which to go first and attack first. So for some age, in terms of their objective journey, it's something like this. Lah. So they are attacking the credibility first because they want to build trust among parents. And then secondly, certificates and recognition of education module. So when they, uh, when they have this kind of like, um, content messaging on credibility, so they want people to recognize their education module and also social acceptance. Huh? So the local community around that area recognize and also acknowledge that there are one special mentally handicapped school in the area. And maybe after that, the community can join them for any activity or donations and whatnot. Lah. So that is the first objective that they have. And then secondly is recruitment. So when they have the credibility, they have built the trust among the parents of the special child. Now they go for a next flow, which is to recruitment. Lah. When they have the trust among parents, so parents is open to send their child to the school. So this is where they do, okay, now we are open up to cater for new students in this module A, B, C. And then we are also recruiting new teachers and we are recruiting volunteers to help us in facilitating this special mentally handicapped person. <laughs> the next objective journey will be monetary. When they have students, uh, they employ teachers, they have volunteers, they need money for NGO. So then, then, then they have the next objective, which is service purchases. So service purchases meaning Whenever the parents send the children at the school, they need to pay the school fees and whatnot. Lah. So this is the service purchases. And when they have created a social acceptance with the community, then the community can help to donate or sponsor teachers, volunteers and students at the school. And finally, partnership. This is where to fill the gap in special education by government agencies or other NGOs. Lah. So this kind of objective works for them. <laughs> so you guys need to determine your own objective journey in order to, to impactfully create your messaging and ensure that you have the target audience at that particular time. Lah. Yep. Okay, moving forward, the second phase of our, our sharing, right? Because we don't, uh, uh, so, in terms of uh, designing your target audience, you need to do a discovery session. And if you guys want to screenshot this, you can use this, this discovery session or discovery question. This is technically 10 to 12 that specifically created in order for you to discover your target audience or your target persona. So first one would be who are the primary beneficiaries of your organization, services or programs? You need to determine who will be the primary beneficiaries. So in the, and then what each group do you 
primarily serve? What is the geographic area that you serve? And what specific needs or issue does your organization address? What demographics they belong to? Age, gender, income, education level, and etc. And then, does your organization have a specific cultural or linguistic focus? What is the gender breakdown of this individual or community that you serve? And then, is there any other demographic characteristic that you are particularly relevant to the community that you serve? And then, how does your organization reach its targets so audience? This is very important so that you really know in terms of what medium really works for your organization to attack your audience. And then, how does your organization measure the impact of its program services on its target audience? And how does your NGO target audience learn about your services? What are the current trends and issues affecting your target audience? And how can we best reach and engage our target audience? So this is sets of questions that really will tell you if you can answer this question in on behalf of your target audience. I think at the end of this part, you can eventually create a persona. Lah. So for some age, for example, who are the primary beneficiaries of the organization? It is a special needs children with mentally handicapped disability. Each group that they serve is from two years old to 50 years old in three programs, early intervention, school program, vocational and shelter workshop, sorry, four programs. So what geographic areas that you serve? Because this is technically a special education school. So they are also tied or bound towards a location parameters. So they are serving for Kuala Lumpur and also Selangor people. What is the specific needs or issues that the organization address? Education and care for mentally challenged children. Demographics that do belong. So this is where you determine because your target audience. First is your beneficiaries and secondly is your target audience because it does not mean your beneficiaries is your target audience. For So for this example, the beneficiaries would be the mentally challenged children. But the target audience are actually their parents. Yeah. So you have to determine that. So in terms of this school, it is for middle-income parents that want alternative paid special education for their special children. So you have to be specific here. What are their demographics? So well-educated and also aware of the importance of education. Why did I say this? This school is you need to pay for the school fees. In order to pay for the school fees, it brings up more towards middle-income parents luck. Like but why it's not catered for high income? That it depends also in terms of the school fees, the facilities that they give, and also other competitors that you have. Lah. For this case, they are tackling for this middle income parent. And the parent that have awareness on education for their mentally challenged person. So this is their target audience. So how do you reach this target audience? By Facebook, normally, you are looking into a 40, 50 year old parents. So they are more on Facebook. They have a group support for their child. Um, they explore blogs, website, talks and seminar. And also open day. So they often go for open day event to learn more about this education and whatnot. So <laughs> how does you measure your organization impacts program? So you can do in individual assessment, student count, meaning if you have a lot more students in your school, then technically your, you reach your target audience. You know? And then donation and collection amount. And then how does your NGO target audience learn about your services? So this is also important, maybe by Facebook, word of mouth, from doctors, parents, special education teacher. What are the current trends and issues affecting your target audience? to find an education syllabus that can fit their special need children that is mentally handicapped. A lot of government facilities focus on physical handicap. So how can you best reach your target audience, social media, online presence, and special children trainings? So this is where you do the, your discovery session. Now, so persona, when you have that 
discovery session. So you can imagine what kind of person you are targeting. So in some hitch case, they are targeting 42 year, uh, 60 years old of parents, have a special child, mentally handicapped only, within 20 meter, kilometers of KL, work as officer or, or businessman, housewife with a middle income family, meaning the husband is working, but the wife is a housewife because they need to care for their mentally challenged kid. And they subscribe to a support group in Facebook. They are also active on Facebook based on their age demography. And they have a little bit of more awareness on education. And they have transport to send their kids to school. And they are looking for solutions. So this is my discovery persona. So we have Encik Hamdan, Madam Chong, and Miss Benny. So the three Malaysians that need, that meet our persona objective. Lah. So I hope by doing this exercise of this discovery question, you guys can really define who is your persona lah, moving forward. So when you have this persona, so this is where you can really attack the right people at the right time, at the right place, with the right content. Yeah. Okay. So, when you have the right persona, you have all the discovery questions and whatnot. I think next and next in line is project. So, under project brief, you can also screenshot this. To maybe you can use later on for your NGOs. So this is where you, what we call a project brief for a content messaging. And the background, you need to tell the background of your sizes, meaning what is the objective or the background that you want people to get. For this case, some hitch will conduct every year, some hitch will conduct an open day to invite parents, educators, and volunteers to visit the school and watch the school learning method or module. They believe that in order to invite and interest the target audience, we need to create a promotional video to give a teaser of what the school is conducting. As a result, it will help to increase the number of participants for this school. Because of we are having a short of time, uh, there's a video actually that we... So for this background, so you can also put a references video that your NGO have created before as a benchmark. Or if not, your NGO, maybe your competitor or the bench video that you want your team to, to achieve or not or to match, to be on par. So I have, apa? so technically there is a video that I want to share, but because we are quite limited of time, then maybe you guys can watch it later on. And then what is the objective of this project and how the, the objective being measured upon project completion? So the objective is to enhance awareness on the school special education program to potential parents, educators, and volunteers. What is the concept? Inspiring, uplifting, and happy. Because we want the parents to be happy sending their child to the school. So it needs to be more towards inspiring, uplifting, and happy. Measurement of success is higher engagement and share for the video. And then, we, who are we talking to and what do we know about them? So the target audience will be the parents with special child, middle income, household, and have high awareness on education. Special education teacher and young individual that like Facebook page of relevant interest in special education. So the following is the demographic of the audience. You can refer the persona page earlier on now yang tadi I share. And then what is the single universal truth that we know about the target audience? There are So this is where you put the issue or the main idea that you want to solve in your content messaging. So there's a lot of misconception content being pushed every day, which led to content fatigue among audience. The misconception on special education that is being offered out there, most of the time is about most of the special school around Malaysia focus on physically that person. And there are only a few that focus on mentally challenged that person. We need to think of a way, a differentiated and fresher way to curate the video that will hook up their attention and they would want to consume and engage with the promo video. So what do we want them to do in terms of, we need them to think that 
the school program is comprehensive, holistic, and meets their needs. And feel they want, we want them to feel safe and secure for their children. What do we want them to do? Come to the school openly and eventually register their children in some age program. So what will motivate them to change if the content is relevant to them and the video has to be emotionally connected to the audience? What will be the most effective tone and style for us to communicate? Authentic, warm, happy. In terms of song choice, you need to have a mellow song in the beginning and uplifting towards the end. Where would be target audience would be most receptive, receptive of our messages through social media, group support, and more. Lah. And then what are your key deliverables, storyboard and also video? Is there any area of sensitivity that you need to be aware of? So you put all these parameters, right? Eventually, you'll get the mood of the video, your key deliverables, your how do you want to push the message to them, stool and uh, tone and style and whatnot. So this is quite important. Sorry. Yep. So stand another 10 minutes for this. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite to the end already. Uh, so yep. So when you have that project brief, this is where you design your marketing plan. So in terms of designing your marketing plan, there are five stages of your marketing plan or the normal thing that we call IDA. So awareness, interest, desire, action, and finally, what do you want to offer your NGO, what to offer or what you want them to buy from you or purchase from you. So in terms of awareness, right, you need to give them awareness or oh, Technically, there are schools that exist during offering these services. There are NGO that focus on this kind of services or this kind of mission that suits your goal or your objective. And then from there, you need to interest them, interest your audience by sharing with them maybe your daily activities or even your recipients, beneficial recipients. Or even how does your program or your NGO program help your beneficiaries? So when they are interested in your NGO, then they come with desire. Desire to what? Desire to volunteer and desire to donate and maybe desire to sponsor your cause. So when they have the desire, this is where you do the action and offer them lah. Action meaning that, okay, if you are interested in donating or sponsoring or volunteering to our cause, you need to go for this invitation. So this is technically the flow that you are going, that, that you need to technically produce for them. But it is quite also similar in terms of your daily life, right? I think realistically speaking, when you want to buy something or when you buy something, you normally start with searching what is the product, the specification and whatnot. And then you study more about the products. You watch the reviews. And finally, that's where you have the add to cut button. So this is all about human behavior. I think if you are on Lazada or you are on Shopee also, the first thing that they put is the picture of the product. So that is awareness. Why? So that is the awareness there they are selling that product, that they have that product that you want. And then interest is where they put the key specification or even reviews, review of people. And also they have this selection of things that you can buy or suggestions. So this will create your interest in terms of, oh, okay, I want this product, I want this product, and it is supported by this kind of reviews and whatnot. So desire is where they put the key requirement of the product, okay, this product can withstand this kind of uh, pressure or whatnot or whatnot. Lah. And then finally, they have the add to cut button. So that is action and also offering. Ah. Yeah. Lastly, from me, I think is the campaign that you can create for your audience. Ah. So when you have your persona, you have your objective and you have, this is where you can design your campaign from maybe January to, to uh, this 
campaign or you can even start like a weekly campaign or even a monthly campaign lah. It depends on you. Yeah. And I think that will be the all from me. Is there any other question from you guys? Yeah, any question from the floor? There's a one question from this, but probably like mm, he wanted to know if you can share the slide for their reference. Oh, yeah. I think I'll share the slide with community ticker. And I think maybe Saif or Zulfir Daus can share with the participants, uh, I believe. Okay, it's for, yeah. That's mm. fantastic. Okay, any, any questions from when, yeah. Yours seems like really 10 or 5 more minutes from you. All right, I think there's no more questions from the floor. Okay. Yep. I think moving forward, right? Yep. Okay. So moving forward, right? If you guys have any questions, you can contact me at, I'll send you my email. Okay. So this is my email. If you have any questions or anything that you want to discuss with me in terms of content strategy or even branding strategy, just email me up and I can maybe spend some of the, my time for you with you guys lah, discussing on that. Yeah. And I think one last thing from me, whenever you want to create a content, always think about who is your recipients and put the, your put in their shoe on them. How would I be most receptive in terms of the messaging that we want to give love? So when you do that, when you decide that you are going to have a really impactful and responsive messaging. And also remember that have somehow nowadays we are bombarded with a sea of content. So what would make your content stand out is most important. So that is what we call influencers and whatnot. Lah. So I really hope whatever sharing that I share today is beneficial for you guys in order to help your NGO. And hopefully we can still meet in the future for more sharing, hopefully. Alice, do you want to share last video before we end our session? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the video that we are, that I'm going to share is technically just one video that we have created for Subhish and it is was produced with a team of Hari Malaysia or Malaysia Independent Day. Lah. Yep, enjoy. He didn't accept that. He cannot take it. He said, no, lah, it, it cannot be. Then I said, okay, you, if you don't want to accept it, it's okay. But please don't uh, call them or beat them. Yep, so that will be the video. Lah. So that's all from me. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're sorry for the video yeah. because we don't have English subtitle for that one. For that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then that's the end of our presentation of our event today. Thank you, Khalis, for really exciting presentation from you. And we really enjoy and get a lot of benefit from your presentation. And we hope there will be a lot more sessions from you in the future. And for participants here, we actually thank you for... For the next month's event, we will let you guys know what's the day and what's the team that we will choose for the next webinar from our NGO. All right. Thank you everyone for saying to the end of our session and hopefully we can have you guys again at the next event. Oh, All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you.